Ron Musgraves, Pressure Washing Institute, Window Cleaning Institute. Hey, I'm going to give some advice here to Guy. Um, he has a box truck. And I, and I wanted you guys to know that um, when you're doing these things as far as enclosed trailers or box trucks, um, the biggest, my biggest tip is one, um, that wood floor, um, you know, I wouldn't stick with wood. Um, I would do something with a diamond plated steel. Um, at least a at least a quarter inch um, if you can do it. Don't do the three eighths. Do a do a full quarter inch. I know it's heavy. It's going to cost you about five hundred dollars, but it's never going to go away. You can put it right over that wood. Um, I would highly recommend that you do. The trick on this is don't rhino coat it. Um, get some non grindable marine paint. Uh, it's the stuff that they use on aircraft carriers. Actually, Sherwin-Williams has the contract for it, and you can go down to a Sherwin-Williams, and it's not going to be something that you're going to be able to buy over the counter at Sherwin-Williams. You're going to have to ask somebody about it. A sales rep's going to have to call somebody else um, and that knows about it, and they're going to have to they're going to have to uh, actually special order it for you. Stuff's not cheap. It's about $120 a gallon, but you're not going to need more than a gallon to do this. That paint is absolutely the best paint. I've got rigs that I'm dead serious. Uh, we have not touched in 11 years. Um, and the paint really, when it says non-grindable, it really means it. Really important though, guy, is that you order the primer with it. It's a, that's a very important process. We skipped the primer on a couple of trailers and it still held up real well, but it didn't hold up as good as the stuff uh, that had the primer on it. And don't forget to follow the wet sanding instructions on the primer. Uh, that's important to scotch bright that and scuff that stuff up. Um, if this is way too much for you to do, that's okay. But I'm telling you that I've, I, I've got this floor thing down in rigs uh, to a T and uh, my floors don't fall out of my trailers anymore. They haven't for a long, long time or my flatbeds uh, that I have that, that I did this with. The second tip, guy, and then I don't care anything else that you do from here on out, um, is the venting. Um, either you're going to slide that skid completely out of the rig on, on, on a sled and have the venting come out, uh, you know, so you're not fuming up the place. Do, do not have any gasoline cans in at all. Go down for $300 have them build custom split tanks if you need diesel and unlead it in there. They can make one tank that's split or they can build individual tanks. Vent those tanks to fill along the same. I notice on the driver's side is where you're going to fill. Design the tanks to be on that side so that when you're at the pump, you can just fill the truck, the diesel, and your unleaded for your equipment all in one stroke. Have the lines running inside feeding off that tank. Um, to there. Get away from the gas cans. It, it, it'll be the best thing you ever did. You'll not only save time, it'll be more efficient, it'll be safer. Um, it, I wouldn't do it any other way and that's the way I do all of mine. I get my tanks done anywhere from three to five hundred dollars depending on what what size tanks. Uh, I pay 400 bucks for a split 45 diesel super. They're DOT approved double double walled, you're not going to have any issues with them. Uh, find somebody in your area that does it. Just look up custom tanks and I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Um, the venting, obviously if you don't do the rollout skid where it's on a sled and it comes outside the, the bed of the truck, which is kind of a hassle sometimes, I don't have any that work like that. We're doing some van units that are going to work like that. But um, if you want to, uh, you got to make sure that that venting of the exhausts and everything are going out of the truck. So either you're going to have to put a fan uh, on the roof for the fumes of the exhaust, but the burner, you're definitely going to have to um, vent that and it's going to have to go directly out. And don't forget to put the rain spout on it on the outside, otherwise you're going to be collecting water down inside your burner. It's going to ruin your insulation. Pretty much that's what I would do. From there on the layout of the truck on the inside, I mean, obviously, you know, that's just going to be a matter of preference of what you want to do. Um, everybody keeps the water tanks up front, splitting the axles. 
uh, because that's going to be your that's going to be your you know the heaviest items that you have in there. Um, obviously, that's to make the truck ride a little bit better, and uh, so that if you ever if you have to get in a situation where you have to go over scale, you're not going to have too much weight on one uh, on the front axle or the rear axle. Um, Ron Musgraves, Pressure Washing Institute out, uh, Window Cleaning Institute out. Hope that helps you, guy. Have a great day.